Let's see if we can do this without flipping a telescope. The Sea Star has a lot of promise for the upcoming total solar eclipse, but what exposures and settings should you use? In this video, I'll quickly go over what I think will work and point out some potential pitfalls you need to be aware of. Okay, here's the plan. For the eclipse, I plan on using the Sea Star during the partial phases and during totality. During the partial phases, I had wanted to do long time lapses from the very start to just before totality. Then starting just before totality, I want to take photos or video of the eclipse sun. I know I won't be able to get too much of the corona, so I'm going to focus on the inner corona prominences and such, uh, but I'll get to that later. Here are some settings to enable beforehand. This will become obvious hopefully later. We want to make sure our sea star is fairly level. All of these tests were done with a stock sea star telescope, tripod, and filter. First thing to consider, temperature. The Sea Star can operate up to a battery temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, which I don't expect to be an issue this eclipse, but above 40 degrees Celsius battery temperature, it won't charge. If you're fully charged, I don't think that will be an issue, but and I'll show you why I don't think it will be an issue in a bit, but something to be aware. Of. Okay, so now the partial phase time lapse. This is pretty straightforward, but there are some possible pitfalls. Once you start a time lapse, you can't back out of the app without stopping the video. It's not the end of the world, but just something to be aware of. You can't point the telescope manually either. You can turn on or off tracking, adjust focus, and exposure. Once you point at the sun, pick tracking and auto center. If you want higher quality images, you can pick raw. I did an autofocus before starting, then pick your interval and hit record. I went with one second, although that might be overkill. It would make a several minute video of all the partial phases, which may or may not be what you want. During the first test, I had an accidental partial eclipse when the sun went behind a neighbor's satellite dish. The good news is the sea star didn't have problems tracking the half-eclipsed sun. Here's another possible pitfall, maximum video duration. I ran across this while looking at the FAQ, shocker. The sea star can only shoot 10 minutes of raw video. Now, even if the time lapses have this issue, it might be okay. I'll get into that later. After I saw that, I decided to do another longer test. Let's go in and look at that video. I did an autofocus at the start, then hit record. I left auto exposure on. After 15 minutes, I turned off auto center. After seven minutes, the sun had drifted partly out of frame and I turned it back on. Now here's another huge pitfall. The video had started getting blurry. I think it was from temperature and the telescope expanding. So at 25 minutes without stopping the video, I pressed autofocus again. The focus was adjusted upward by 80 units. Now the time lapse la ran for almost 100 minutes. Honestly, I'm probably only going to do half hour time lapses, maybe less. What about totality? There are two things I've been wondering about and people have asked me about. Will it track during totality and what kind of exposure do I plan? First, tracking. I ran another, yet another test where two minutes into the time lapse, I completely covered the sea star for 10 minutes. That's double the duration of totality and it seemed fine. Okay, now exposure. The first trick will be removing the solar filter from the telescope at totality without jostling it. And then there are the constraints. The corona is too big to completely fit in the frame. Prominences are much brighter than the corona. We'll have to go with either adjusted automatic or fully manual exposures at this point. I'm gonna go fully manual. There's shutter speed and gain. I'm not sure what the C-Star base ISO gain is. I did a very unscientific test with the Sea star filter, a Bader filter, and a Thousand Oaks filter. It seemed like the Sea star filter was in between the other two filters. If so, a properly exposed full sun through the Sea star filter would have an exposure partly between prominences and the inner corona during totality. That's not a terrible place to start exposure-wise. You might want to lower or raise it a touch once totality starts, but I think this means you have the exposure at one millisecond and a gain of 10. Carefully remove the solar filter and then just adjust a little bit. Another possible pitfall, be careful about doing too much with your phone. For example, running an eclipse tracker app and controlling the C-Star at the same time. I'll be doing some further tests and I'll post another video if I run across anything noteworthy. So please keep an eye out for that. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Man, it is late. I should have done this earlier. Yep.